Hey everybody, it's your old pal Wood Doofus here. Today we're going to be making a sliding barn door for my sister. The measurements of the barn door is going to be 7 foot tall by 30 inches wide, which is a custom size for the opening to her bathroom. I just went out and bought all the material that I think I'm going to need. I bought three boards that are 1 by 8 and 12 foot long of southern yellow pine for the border. And for the paneling, I have one sheet of 4 by 8 quarter inch plywood. The total cost of all these materials so far is just $100. My sister's going to buy her own sliding barn door hardware to put on there. And we also have to figure out a handle, but the wood material, just $100. So let's get started. So the length of my rails are going to be seven foot long. And so I had the store cut off four feet of these 12 foot long boards so I could transport them better. So I have eight foot sections here, so I just need to cut off 12 inches and I'll have 84 left for the rails. Now that I got the length of the rails cut, I only need a width of each rail to be three and a half inches and a one by eight is seven and a quarter. So now I need to open up my garage door and rip down two strips of eight and a half, sorry two strips of three and a half inches and this is actually going to be I'm going to double up this material to make the rails and you'll see how that works out in the end. So according to my design, I have four styles that are going to be 23 inches, which is 30 minus the 7 inches of the rails. But I also have two styles that are going to be 30 inches, and that will all make sense later on. So I think I can get all four of the 23 inches out of this cutoff right here. So here we have the basic layout of the door now. Uh, the last two pieces you probably didn't see me cut are these rails right here and they're just five feet long. So I'm going to be joining all of this with pocket holes on every seam and then I'm going to do make a similar piece to this out of the other material and sandwich the two together with some paneling inside. So to accept the paneling, I need about uh, an eighth to a quarter of an inch uh, groove around each one of these openings. So the panel can sit in there nicely. Now to make sure I got this uh, center style, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so to make sure I got this center rail centered, I, uh, I measured the center point of this piece. This is 23 inches, so half of that is 11 and a half. And then the center of three and a half is one, one and three quarters. And I did that on both sides and that's lined up in the center. So when I route out what is basically gonna be a rabbit, I wanna make sure I don't get the rabbit all the way to the end because I don't want a little void showing at the end here when it's all done. So I'm gonna have to stop. Now, the good thing is, is I don't have to stop perfectly because once I put the panel in there, nothing's gonna show so I have the luxury of just taking it a little bit past there as long as I don't go all the way to the end I'm good so I'll just route it out a little bit past there so there's plenty of room for the panel to be accepted and also plenty of room to put the pocket holes in there later so the material that I'm using for the paneling is gonna be this thick and I'm gonna I'm gonna be cutting out a groove out of both facings that are gonna to sandwich together. So I have my bit set to that depth and just a hair more so I don't end up with a gap there. And I have my fence set to a quarter of an inch past zero, which should give me just past the lip there, enough probably about a quarter of an inch of a rabbit to set the panel in.
So now we got all the grooves cut and I guess I should clarify what I said before. The only grooves that need a stop are the two styles and they need to stop there and they need to stop there. As long as you can get the panel all the way over, it could exceed that a little bit. You just need to save space to get your pocket holes in. The other pieces you'll see they just the groove went all the way from end to end on the center style. I have grooves on both sides going from end to end and then that one down there just one side obviously. All right I'm pretty sure I'm mixing up the uh, rails and styles over and over again so don't listen to me anytime I say that. But we're moving on to the pocket holes. Now we need to make sure we drill the pocket holes into these rails and there we go that would make the screw go into the pocket hole and into the side grain of the style the reason is we don't want to drill the screw from here to here because then the screw would go into the end grain which is not a good connection now i am going to glue this joint which would reinforce it but it's bad practice to screw into the end grain unless you absolutely have to but if you do, you should be using a different joint. So we are drilling into three quarter inch material. So this actually auto clamps it at the right depth. This is my Craig Jig 720 Pro. So that sets it. I'm gonna, it looks like I'm gonna use these two holes to stay away from the two edges here. I'm gonna set my bit at three quarter inch material. So I screw the right depth. And go ahead and stick that in the drill. All right, my microphone battery just died, but I'm basically putting the last couple pocket screws in on this last rail here. So I'm just gonna add some glue. All right, so each half of the door is gonna have three panels and these long ones are 61 inches long, 10 and three quarters inches wide and the top ones are 14 and a half by 24. So I need two of the top ones, I need four of the bottom ones. So I have the 61 inch mark there and the 14 and a half by 24 over there and I'm just gonna cut them. So the panels are glued into the first one and it's ready to go and I have the layout for the second one and just to reiterate I cut this orientation different so when they're sandwiched together the joint will be super strong so these uh, these rails along the top are actually long and go to the edge and then the styles butt up against so the pocket holes are going to go opposite so when this joint is glued to that joint then they will be super strong and uh, shouldn't have any problems with it so now i just have to wrap this out just like the other one and then we'll sandwich them together so i have the second panel all put together so all i gotta do now put a little bit of glue all around my routed rabbits here and then put the panels in and then both And then both panels will be complete. So at that point, I will be ready to sandwich the two together and hope that I have enough clamps. So I just put a buttload of glue all over this thing and then I spread it around the edges at least with some kind of spreader. And I put it on the panels too, but I'm not going to bother spreading that. I just want to make sure it's Got good adhesion to the end, so. <sighs> so now I have to take this panel, put it on top of this one and clamp them together.
All right, so I just took the clamps off, and one thing I anticipated is having a little lippage throughout this sandwiching process, and that's to be expected because it's really hard to get things perfectly square when you're just working with pocket screws and stuff like that. So all I have to do is uh, I put my edge guide here for my circular saw right on the inside edge with the idea that we are going to take off that little lip right there. I could even, I might just adjust it just a hair past there so it cuts them both, gives it a nice trim. And then if there's any gap along this seam, then I, we will fill that later. All right, so my little homemade guide is not long enough to get the long edge cleaned up. So one little hack that I do is I keep a straight edge of some kind around the shop. Right now it's this oak trim. And the, the way I space it out is I know that I need a five and one eighth uh, space uh, between the edge I wanna cut and my fence. And so I have this block that I keep in a drawer and it says five and one eighths, which is exactly the length I need. And it's lining it up on both ends with just a little lip hanging off right there and then I can just take the block out once the straight edge is clamped down and make the cut. Right now that we got the edge, the edge is all trimmed. We need to knock down this uh, sharp uh, corner here and I already had to, I knocked down the inside corner. I had to do it with a, an orbital sander because my router was interfering with the uh, or it was making contact with the panel so but the outside I can use my router but I just took the round over to a pretty low setting because I don't want to round this over the shaker style has sharp edges but we don't want it so sharp that it's going to cut you so we're just going to knock down the sharp corner just barely to keep it looking sharp but not enough to cut you Alright, so this is one of the spots where there's a visible gap somewhere in the clamping process that uh, we need to take care of. So you can put wood filler in there, but if I have some glue and sawdust sitting around, I just go that route sometimes. So just take a little glue, put it in the crack. And you'll definitely have to come back and sand this later, make sure you get the, any glue residue off. But, all you have to do now, grab a handful of the sawdust that's been flying all over the garage for a while. Ow. You get, get the sawdust that has plenty of splinters in it so it hurts yourself. Just put it on that glue. And rub it, oh, no, it fell. And rub it down there. After the, uh, the whole door falls, it kills you. And once you rub the glue off, that gap should be gone. And there's still a little bit of residue, even though you rubbed it off. You can do quite a bit with your finger, but you need to get the orbital sander in there after this. You get that glue off of there. I'm going to paint this. If you're going to stain this, then you got to make sure you absolutely get all the glue sanded off. Because it'll interfere with stain. But I'm just going to paint this, so I'm just going to make sure I get most of the glue sanded off. So I still got my jacket on backwards because I just finished painting and I do that to make sure when the paint gets on there I can still turn it around and not have the paint showing on my jacket. So the paint's still drying but I'm pretty much done. Some people might have thought when you're watching this video that I should have done a tongue and groove system. It would have been a good joint system to do this with. But I opted not to do that because I would have had some really long pieces to make the tongues on and I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to make this a simple project. You could also have used 2 by material and cut a dado down the center, but you would have to use a planer and a joiner to get your rails and styles nice and straight, and that's some expensive uh, equipment. So I did this system with the 1 by material, and it ends up being a half-lap joint system, which is still strong as long as you have good glue adhesion. It's a pretty strong joint. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video now. I'm gonna take this to my sister's house in a couple days and I'll put some pictures at the end of the video, hopefully, that will show it in place. And otherwise, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. And as always, don't be afraid to be a doofus.